I'm Amy McGenner, Head of Digital and Assessment for UK Schools at Pearson. And in a former life, I was an English teacher for 10 years in London State Schools. Here at Pearson, we have a wealth of expertise in supporting students and teachers with digital services that support online learning. There's Connections Academy, our US curriculum school with over 80,000 full-time online students, and our British curriculum school partnership, the Harrow School Online. And many of you already use our Active Learn Primary and Active Learn Secondary service, which has a bursting curriculum library containing student activities and assessments, all of which can be completed online by you or your students. We also have a huge community of teachers here in the UK who work with us on a regular basis. And so we've pulled together our best practice ideas so that we can share with you some of our top tips for preparing to teach remotely. Top tip number one, define the curriculum content. Some of the schools that we've been speaking to are planning a scaled back version of their curriculum. They're going to begin by focusing on English and maths plus one daily enrichment activity. And they'll then begin to build out from there as teachers, parents and learners become more confident with this style of delivery and learning. Top tip number two, decide how you will deliver your curriculum. So many UK schools now use Microsoft Teams or G Suite, which means we've never been better prepared for online delivery of learning. The video functions are superb, so you can record, you can deliver live lessons, you can share your screen, you can co-collaborate on documents, and students can use the chat function to break out into mini teams and contribute to the learning. Zoom conferencing is also great and free to use. If you don't have all of this set up now and you are unfamiliar with any of it, it really doesn't matter. Most of the applications are intuitive and you really can learn as you go and learn alongside your students. Top tip number three, communication is obviously key. How will you reach students? and how will they reach you? Do students have the equipment they need? If not, can it be provided? As a teacher, you will want to communicate regularly with your classes, including parents and guardians of your students, to provide an overview of what you would like the class to cover each week. This could include an email with the week's timetable of activities and any links needed to complete that work. Ensure students have regular reminders and clear instructions on how and when to submit work and make sure they have your contact information and availability so that they can get in touch if they have any queries. Chat functions within applications make this even easier than email. Top tip number four, plan lessons using the flipped classroom model. What can you give your students to do on their own prior to engaging in a discussion with you or with other students? Provide students with resources such as texts and videos and podcasts, along with clear instructions so that when they're watching a video or a podcast, they're actively engaged and there's a clear outcome for that activity. There are lots of lovely resources on active learn that can help you prepare for a dynamic remote learning environment. Top tip number five, create pre-recorded video lessons. Record yourself delivering a lesson that can be shared with your students online and reviewed by them at a time that suits them. Ensure your lessons require students to be actively involved in some way. So ask them questions and give them thinking time before giving them the answers. The more active processing required, the more likely a student is to learn. Top tip number six, deliver live lessons. That might feel daunting, but using web conferencing to reach out to a class or a group of students to give a lesson in real time is a great way of reaching your students. Make your lessons interactive, allowing the chance for discussion using online chat or audio streaming, and use these lessons to reinforce and extend the content that you've asked students to work through independently. Top tip number seven, Offer office hours. Block off one to two hours each day and make yourself available, either in a web conferencing room or by phone to students and parents or guardians to answer questions and provide that crucial academic support. If you initially find you're not getting much take up, invite individual students or small groups for targeted micro lessons in your office hours to focus on areas for which they need support. And if you can't access web conferencing software, simply call your students instead. Top tip number eight, encourage student collaboration. Use discussion boards, forums, chat functionality to get students talking. Collect students' responses to activities and request that they comment on one another's work online. Design assignments using online shareable documents so that students can collaborate in small groups. Top tip number nine, give feedback. Students can submit assessments using online tools or teachers can send assessments to students via email attachment to be completed and emailed back. You can use ActiveLearn to do this. 
or your favorite search engine to find a variety of free online learning games and quiz creation tools. Studying online gives students the opportunity to follow a slightly more individualized learning plan than might normally be possible at their school. This is a great opportunity to make that provision. But do remember to reach out to students and celebrate the successes in the work they have completed independently to keep up that momentum. Top tip number 10, connect with us. We are 100% committed to supporting schools, so get in touch if there is a way that we can help. And in the meanwhile, we'll keep connecting you with other schools by sharing best practice to support remote learning.